everyone, it's Brad here from Yu-Gi-Oh! Team Plus One, and today I'm going to be making a video on some rulings that aren't so commonly known, and I'm going to be covering ones that actually come up a lot. It's just surprising that people don't understand um, that these rulings are out there yet, because these decks have been out for quite a while now. I'm going to be covering some of the decks such as um, Burning Abyss, uh, Shadal, Cliff Orts, and Mermail, and some other stuff along in there. So, these are going to be rulings that are going to come up. Um, whether or not you know it happened, um, just so you can better yourself and learn and understand why the rulings are happening, and just so you can prevent uh, any misplaying or cheating that's going on, whether it's intentional or not. So, the first one I'm going to cover is going to involve Burning Abyss and how they work. So, if I have a Dante out, which I have one material on it, um, I'm going to want to use Dante's effect. I'll declare his effect by detaching, declaring how many I'm milling, and I'm milling three, and that is all cost. That is everything through cost. Now my opponent gets the chance to respond. It is quite common for people to declare a number, like they'll just say three in this chat or something, and they'll expect you to respond then before they mill. And that is not how it works out. It actually does mill for cost. So if I didn't mill something like a Shadal monster, which needs to be sent to the graveyard by card effect, it would not get its effect. So I now have paid cost for Dante. And I, has, I have to ask my opponent if they have a response. And at this point, my opponent would be able to respond with something like DD Crow. I could detach or send DD Crow to the graveyard to banish something like... I'd banish the Seer or something. And then I could also activate the effect of Abyss Wall in this time. But um, just for the sake, I'm not going to activate that right now because I have to show you something. Um, so my opponent respond. Now DD Crow resolved because it banished the Seer already. Now Dante's effect resolved. And it gets 500 attack for each card sent to the graveyard this way. Now at this point, we can start the next chain link. And uh, we would activate any effects we want to here. So the first thing we need to do is see if we want to activate the effect of Graph. So Graph was the one we detached from Dante. And since we detached him before we did anything else, he is going to have to be chain link one if we're using him, or he won't be if like he won't have a chance to activate if we don't activate him chain link one. So I choose to activate Graph um, chain link one. Then I can activate cards like other Burning Abyss monsters or uh, Absolute King Blackjack or anything else that would get an effect in any chain link, no matter like if it was sent, it was the first of the three cards sent, it doesn't matter. I could activate those in any order. So that's the first thing I wanted to cover with uh, Burning Abyss. There's a ton more rulings I need to cover, and the first one is just going to be a really, really simple one. So Effect Veiler recently. Um, within the past year has been changed. Everybody's used to it ending in the end phase of that turn. Recently, when it was reprinted, it was reprinted and it says, now, during your opponent's main phase, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard, then target one face-up effect monster your opponent controls, negate that face-up effects monster's effects until the end of this turn. So this no longer is restricted until the end phase. So I would be able to stop card effects such as Curry Bandit. Um, Curry Bandit is in the end phase. If it was normal summon, you can send it to the graveyard to mill five. So um, this would now stop this uh, Curry Bandit's effect, where as before it wouldn't have because it did stop in the end phase. Now on to our next set of rulings. So this one is going to be kind of a simple one. Um, and it's going to involve Cliff Orts. So Cliff Orts are a pretty commonly used deck. And let's say I have out these two Cliff Orts, Helix and Carrier. And then I'm going to tribute summon for Stealth. So I'm going to tribute these. And they go to the extra deck face up when you tribute them. And then I normal summon Stealth. And at this point, all their effects can activate. So we have uh, the effect of Stealth when he's tribute summoned. Using a Klee Monsters, you can target a card on the field, return it to the hand. We have the effect of Helix, which when it's tributed by a card effect, or sorry, when it's tributed, you can target a spell or trap card on the field and destroy that. And then we have Carrier, that if this card is tributed, you can target one monster on the field, return it to the hand. 
So, in order for this to all resolve properly, stealth has to be the highest chain link when it's resolving. So, um, if I attribute all three of these and I want to activate all three of their effects, I'd have to declare carrier or helix to be one and two in any order we want, and then stealth. And at the time you declare their effects, you also target what you're targeting to return or be destroyed, depending on what card. But stealth would have to be the highest chain link in order for it to resolve all properly. So now we got something else I got to show you. And this is going to involve uh, Yang Zing. So I have right now a face up Vanity's Emptiness. And I have a face up Bixie. I enter my main phase, go into my battle phase, and I declare an attack on Abyss Dweller. So now Bixie dies in a chain link one where it would be properly able to activate its effect. So now the effect of Vanity's Emptiness would activate, which is mandatory. If a card is sent from the deck or the field to the graveyard, destroy this card. So now this effect is mandatory, I said, so it's going to have to activate chain link one. And it does activate in a separate chain, so it ha activates after something is sent to my graveyard. So this card is still currently face up on my field. And then when this card is destroyed by battle or by card effect and sense of the graveyard, you can special summon one Yang Zing monster from your deck and face up attack position. So Bixie, it would normally be able to activate its effect when it dies by battle. But in this situation, I still have a face up Vanity's Emptiness, declaring neither player can special summon monsters. So in this case, I would not be able to activate the effect because I cannot attempt a special summon while Vanity's Emptiness is on the field then this would be destroyed as it resolves, and Bixie would not have a window where it could activate its effect properly. So that is something that you should keep in mind, because that does come up with like cards like Burning Abyss, like if you Dark Hole a uh, Graph, and they had Vandies on the field. So then the Graph would be sent to the graveyard while Vandies is still face up on the field, so it would not have a window where it can activate. It would be the same situation for Chiwen if I had the face up Vandies Emptiness, and a Yang, excuse me, a Yang Zing monster was destroyed, I would not be able to attempt the special summon of a Chiwin because there is still the face of Vanity's Emptiness declaring neither player can special summon monsters. All right, for this next one, it's going to be a, a ruling involving Mermails mainly because I'm showing it using them and Atlanteans, I guess. But um, it also involves some other decks, so this is kind of a generic thing. So if I summon Genex Undyne, and its effect is when this card is normal summon, you can send one water monster from your deck to the graveyard, add a Genix controller from your deck to your hand. First of all, I'm already going to break the rules here because I don't have a Genix controller put into this deck. I forgot to put it in there. Um, but let's say I do and I'm activating its effect. I go ahead and declare the effect and pay the cost. And I send, let's say, uh, Atlantean Marksman, a water monster, to pay cost. And then I resolve the effect, and I add, let's say this is the Genix controller to my hand. So, let's say I add that to my hand. So, before I can add this to my hand, though, I have to wait and let my opponent respond. So, this is important, because if my opponent decides to respond here with a card such as D.D. Crow again, D.D. Crow is messing up all these players, and banishes this Atlantean Marksman that was sent to the graveyard, the effect would resolve, it banishes the Atlantean Marksman, I add this fake Genix controller to my hand, and then, normally I would want to activate the effect of Atlantean Marksman, because it was sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster's effect. But, unfortunately, since this card has to remain in the graveyard to activate and resolve the effect, so this is going to prevent me from activating its effect, targeting his face down. So... That's going to be something that comes up actually quite a lot if you're using a deck that can banish anything um, after paying costs, such as DD Crow. And there might be some more cards coming out that will do such a thing. But um, that is that is also similar to having the ability to activate um, a Abyss Dweller after they send the Atlantean or a Water Monster to prevent that Water Monster from activating its effect in the first place. So... 
because it was cost, I could respond and have this effect resolve first before this effect could activate, and then this effect prevents the effect of uh, anything from the gra in the graveyard um, being activated this turn. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and activate this Shadal Fusion, and I'm going to send my grave Falco and Satellar Knight to Neb, so light and a dark, and summon Shadal Construct. All's good. So, now I want to activate as many effects as I can. So, in order for me to get all these effects to resolve, I have to activate Construct as the highest chain link. So, I'd have to declare any effects that I want to activate before Construct, like as chain link 1 through whatever I have. So, I'm going to activate Falco first, so that's chain link 1. And then I wish to declare no other effects, so I activate the effect of Construct as chain link 2, my highest chain link. Then my opponent would be able to re uh, respond with anything that they want. And then this would resolve. I would send something that I don't have. Um, you have to have something in there to declare it, by the way. This is just a deck thrown together to show a lot of rulings. I strongly recommend against playing this. And then Falco would resolve, and it would summon itself in face on defense position. So that's a quick little thing I had to cover with Construct. Um, this next one has to do with its battle phase. So I've seen some people try to do this. So the, they'll go into their battle phase, and they'll attack Construct with a special summon monster like Abyss Dweller. They're going to try to trigger the effect of Shadal Construct to activate, which destroys a any special summon monster at the start in the damage step. So we now enter the damage step, and I've seen people try to go Ghost Ogre to destroy the Shadal Construct, and then they say their special summon monster would survive. And that is something that is false. So, this order of chain links is, I've entered the damage step, Construct would activate its effect chain link 1, then my opponent would activate and resolve their Ghost Ogre, destroying Shadal Construct, and then the effect of Shadal Construct would still resolve, and um, it would destroy the special summon monster it was battling, and that would be the end of that battle. So, that was just a thing I've seen some people do, and it's actually really, really wrong, and it matters a lot of the time, but... Um, then the effect of Construct could activate after that battle resolved, because it was sent to the graveyard. Um, next thing I want to cover is a timing ruling, and I have a few of these I need to cover with you guys. So this one uh, comes up with Satellar Knights a lot, it comes up with uh, Shadal's uh, kind of, not as often. But let's say uh, my opponent has this guy already out, and then he Tribute Summons for Caius, the Shadow Monarch. And then he goes ahead and declares the effect targeting my face down Falco, and then at this point, I'm given the chance to respond. So I choose to activate Sinister Shadow Games. I send I send a Shadal monster from my deck to the graveyard, and then I declare that I'm flipping monsters up. So this resolves. It flips Falco face up, and then Caius would resolve, banishing this, and now it's start of a new chain link. So Shadal Beast would be able to activate its effect, but unfortunately Shadal Falco would not be able to. So Falco, along with every other flip effect monster, has to remain on the field to activate and resolve their flip effects. Um, you can see this in a lot of things. Um, Kai's is just a very, um, sit, like, very easy situation to explain it, but um, this does come up in quite a few things. So Shadal Falco... Although it was flipped up while on the field with uh, Sinister Shadow Games, it was banished before it had an activation window. So that is going to prevent it from activating its effect, uh, or its flip effect. Next thing I need to show you guys involves Satellar Knights. So some of you guys might know what this ruling is. If I have this Helix out, and I tribute it away to summon something, or uh, tribute set, let's say, and then I activate the effect of Helix, targeting this face down, uh, card. Now, my opponent will be able to respond, and they're going to activate Call the Haunted, targeting their Satellar Knight to Neb. There's no further chains to be activated, so this resolves. Brings out to Neb, so it was successfully summoned, and then it is sent to the graveyard because Call the Haunted was destroyed and by the effect of Helix. Now, lots of people here would assume that um, since Satellar Knight to Neb says if this card is summoned, instead of when this card is summoned, it would be able to activate its effect, which is false. 
because it still has to remain on the field to be able to activate its effect in the first place. So that is something um, that I've seen a lot of people do. They'll get their Call of the Haunted MST, they'll chain it, summon the Denev, and get a search off, which isn't able to be hap or able to actually happen. So these these have been like kind of situational rulings, I know, and I've only showed them with a few cards. But I think they're really, really important for you guys to know, just because I I feel like they come up enough that they should matter, and I'm a strong believer that you should play the game how it's meant to be played, and not like, oh, we both were wrong on a ruling here, it doesn't matter anyways. It does matter. Almost every single time, the outcome of the game can change, depending on a little ruling uh, between just like any of these rulings I showed you, like the Yang Zing one with vanities and stuff like that. And that reminds me of one final thing to show you, and that is involving Yang Zing's yet again. So I have a set creation, a face-up defense position Chi Win. Okay, so now it's my opponent's turn. So he's going to enter the battle phase, and he's going to attack my Chi Win. I do not wish to activate any effects, and it goes to damage step, and this resolves, destroying Chi Win, and now, in the damage step, I want to activate the effect of Chi Win, because it was destroyed by battle, and it will activate in the damage step, and then I also am able to activate the effect of Yang's in creation here, and continuous trap cards are able to be flipped up and activate their effect when the timing is appropriate, but they're also generally able to be flipped up uh, almost whenever besides in the damage step. So you would assume that because it's in the damage step, you cannot activate uh, continuous trap cards like that were face down. But since its timing is correct in this situation, because a Yang Zing monster, or sorry, I had a monster that I controlled was destroyed by battle, I can actually flip it face up and activate the effect of this. And I would summon now a Yang Zing from this and a Yang Zing from Chi Wen. So... That concludes all the rulings that I felt I needed to share, because I felt I feel like there's so many out there, but there's these ones that come up a ton and are very important. I feel like rulings are really fun, and um, it's important to teach people how to play the game properly. So, if you guys have questions about rulings or rulings you want me to cover, so more more people are knowledgeable of them, I will definitely do that. There's uh, definitely some gameplay rulings I want to go over, such as the battle phase, um, it versus that, win versus if, and a lot of other things like that. So tell me if you guys enjoyed something like this. I know I was um, a little bit scatterbrained. I had to switch between accounts because I was making this on my own. But definitely tell me if you want to see more things like this. I had a lot of fun making this uh, because I could just Think of a lot of crazy rulings that I, I liked showing. So um, that's it. Um, tell me if you guys like it. Uh, leave feedback. I love feedback. I love reading your guys' comments. I'll be bored in school and open up YouTube and just look at all the comments I have. And that's, that's what gets me through the day, guys. So thank you guys for watching, and have a great day.